my patient here was just asking me about coccyx pain and what actually happens to the coccyx. Is it, does it break? Or and it's not broken. Most often when people have coccydinia, coccyx pain is usually inflammation around the coccyx and it's usually caused by direct trauma, but it can also be caused by ligament laxity during pregnancy and then movement of the baby through the birth canal and put some pressure on the coccyx and that could also have an effect. So we're going to look at some techniques today. Once it's flared up, that can cause this um, neural pattern where the brain any time pressure is put onto it or they have any contact, it sets off the pain again. So we're working into the muscles today using cupping and the muscles that attach onto the coccyx, so either side of the coccyx. To locate the coccyx, you're going to use your hand, the palm aspect of your hand, and work from the lumbar spine, apply pressure from posterior to anterior, like so, straight down, until you feel the last bony segment. And you want to obviously be very careful if somebody's in pain, it's going to be very tender. So once you get to the, that tip, the coccyx, either side of that, which is within the gluteal folds, you're going to be placing your cup and you're going to first work into what well, superficial would be glute maximus, the muscle that's overlying and there's deep tissues to that which attach onto the coccyx, so those are the ones that we're trying to work on. Then again we've got some soft tissue above that point which indirectly relates to the coccyx as well, attaches onto there and or directly and also is part of the posterior chain which affects the coccyx because if you're sitting and that's usually when coccyx pain flares up then you're affecting the whole posterior chain not just the coccyx so if you have pain in the coccyx it's going to um, correlate with pain in other areas or it's going to affect pain in other areas so that's why we want to work on those areas too we're going to do lumbar spine so here's the spine's process so either side of that, onto, that happens quite often, onto the muscular erecta spiny, so paravertebral muscles. In terms of how much pressure you use with the cups, it is usually dictated by the person in terms of how much they feel comfortable with, um, with this type of dry cupping which doesn't involve cutting the skin and drawing out blood, uh, which is a bit more risk risky. This um, produces the effects solely through suction. So one pull is quite mild, two pulls is how much most people need in order to feel um, blood being drawn into the ear, tissues being pulled on, fascia being affected. So that's about right for most people. And then if that's not enough, you can communicate with your patient and ask them if that's not enough and they can tell you whether they want more. You'll also work further down onto the hamstrings as well, usually just below the, glu uh, the glutes where the, is where you'd start working on the hamstrings and then further down in the belly of the hamstrings in between the knee and the um, glute is where you'd also place a cup as well. So this is an example of a treatment. You usually leave a cup down for around 15 to 20 minutes. And this is a great way to release tension on the coccyx. You'd want to be doing this treatment weekly and this would facilitate the recovery. So I hope that helps and let me know how you get on. Thanks for watching guys.